here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and YouTube channel. And my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. And I was off last week. I did not paint live with you guys, but I'm back this week. And we're going to finish working on the project that we've been working on. We're actually going to finish this one up this week. Um, and you guys can go back and watch the entire progression from the paint to the transfers to the waxes. Everything we've done on this piece we did on camera together. So you can see the full process and the full tutorial. And then I'll also wrap it up into an edited version that goes up on my YouTube channel later. So there's a shortened version of it as well. So uh, let's go ahead and finish it up tonight. So uh, you guys, my husband Sean is here behind the camera to help answer any questions as we go along. So uh, pop on and ask those, anything you might have. So this is the piece that we've been working on. And let me tell you a little bit about what we've got on here so far. Uh, so we did a really pretty paint finish using Wise Owl paint. And the colors that I have on here are um, Vintage Duck Egg, uh, which is the soft blue green. I've got Weather Vane, which is this charcoal gray. And then I used a little bit of Isles Avenue, which is a, a creamy white color. And I just kind of highlighted with that. And I use a stippling uh, brush stroke. And so it's got this really soft, almost leather, or like a suede looking feel to it. And then we added this transfer from Redesign with Prima. This is called Minty Roses, and I feel like it per perfectly complements the colors in this piece. These are the colors, uh, what it looks like before we applied it. So you can kind of see what it would have looked like before. And then when I put it onto that background, and I did put a little tiny bit of paint over the top of it, so it just kind of muted those colors and tones it down a little bit. It's really pretty on this background. What colors did you use? Um, I'm totally kidding. It's going to get asked like 15 times. Don't worry about it. Okay. And then I don't know if you can see it, but I also added a little piece of the transfer in here behind uh, in the back of this cabinet, which I think was perfect. It's a nice little accent that ties the back into the front. I, of course, have some redesign with Prima molds on here. Those are were cast in amazing casting resin. And what we're going to do tonight is kind of our finishing touches. So I'm going to add a little bit of an accent on the inside of these doors. Can you see that door? Of course you're or going is, to. Is it easier for me to work on this one? You know, what? it is hard for you to see this. I'll go ahead and work on this one. Why don't you just work on the back of the piece while you're in yeah. it? All right, so on this one, though, I did not take off this hardware, so let me take this off really quick. No. Oh. I, I can't even look at you right now. I know. It's super poor. Go ahead, and everybody, go ahead and time super out. Super poor planning. So I like to do, when I do cabinets that have doors like this, I usually will do the back side of the door first. That's pretty optional. I see a lot of artists that can go either way on it, but I do like to do the back side of the door. And then I kind of end it there. I do a nice clean line here where my paint ends and I'll clean up the inside of this. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of that tonight too. So this paper is what I'm gonna add to the back side of these doors. And I feel like it complements really well my color scheme. Oh, hey, look, Dana's still alive. How about that? Dana, all right. Who, yeah. who do you well, she, Dana? she's, <laughs> I'm still alive and you're all worried that, about me. Is it Dana Files? Uh, no, Perry Ridge. Oh, Dana, hey, sorry, Dana. Um, okay, we're glad you're okay. Great, I'm yeah. glad you're alive. Oh, Solly's on. Oh, hey, Solly. Oh my gosh. I miss you. We need to catch up. We've been saying that for a while now. Um, this is called Neutral Florals. It's from Redesign with Prima. And um, it's kind of a it's kind of a fiber feeling. It's a nice durable paper, but it also makes it really, really easy to apply. So I did apply a base coat of my paint to the back side of my drawers. This is Vintage Duck Egg, and I'm going to apply this over the top because it's going to show through and keep my background color similar. The other thing I always look for when I'm applying a decoupage paper is I want to apply it in the way that I'm going to get the least amount of waste. So if you look at these, these are nice, long, narrow doors. So if I do it right here, I've got just enough to just cut off the edge of this paper, and I have very, very minimal waste, like, like a half an inch at the bottom I'll end up losing as waste. If I put it horizontal like this, I'm going to end up having to cut a chunk out of this paper and it's going to it's going to mean I've got a large portion that's kind of awkward to use in the future. So I'm going to, I try to preserve as much as I can. So I'm going to apply it in the way that I get the least amount of waste, waste, which is going to be this horizontal application. And I can kind of line it up. I'm not even going to cut it beforehand. Um, what I'm going to be using for my adhesive is going to be Wiseau Matte Varnish. It's a clear coat. And I'm going to pop my container open. Uh, this is what it looks like in the container. It's a really user-friendly um, way to apply decoupage. 
I also use wallpaper paste a lot. I think uh, the only difference really is uh, I like wallpaper paste for thicker papers and um, it has a little bit longer of an open time but I'm not going to need that on this paper because it's so easy to apply. Um, right off the bat I'm going to stir my matte varnish. I just always love YouTube because it really shows up the, uh, the antiquing of your floor. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this is a workspace, guys. I'm not even going to try to pretend it's a beautiful studio. I work out here. I'm pretty proud of this floor, actually. It's got a lot of miles <laughs> on it. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so when I stir this, I'm pulling out from the bottom because that's where anything that would settle, and especially when you're using matte clear coats, they will have particles in them. That is what makes the formula into a matte formula, and they can tend to settle. So you want to always make sure you stir all your clear coats really well, but especially when you're using anything that has a matte Never settle. sheen to it. <laughs> oh, now you tell me. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply with a brush um, my matte varnish just to the back side of my door. I am going to work around these hinges, and I'll show you what I plan to do with those. And I'm going to apply a pretty heavy coat. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So this I'm just brushing here. this on. Brush strokes don't really matter. I just want to make sure that I get it nice and covered and a pretty heavy coat. I don't want too thin or it'll start setting up on me. I want to have plenty of clear coat to saturate the, that paper. And then once I've got it all on, I'm just going to kind of brush over it one more time, make sure it's all... Trying to get you guys in there. Nice and fresh. She likes to put stuff in my way. Sorry, guys. Well, I, you know, like this like basket of... Oh, brushes. Crap. It's brushes. I need those. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and find my corner on here. And I'm going to start matching my paper up to the lines of my door. Okay, so once I've got one edge complete, I'm going to start pressing it into there. And I'm it, that clear coat I can feel is kind of saturating that paper. And I want it to saturate that paper. I can feel it start coming over into the front side of it. And there's a couple tools you can use uh, to flatten out your paper too. These are spread pals from Redesign with Prima. And these are really nice for, I use these for applying um, uh, race stenciling, but they can be used to kind of squeegee anything out. So those are an option. And also, where is my brayer? A brayer is a great tool to have for decoupage. I use this quite a bit. I do have a little uh, wrinkle in my paper. This is where the seam of the paper was, and I'll show you in a second how I'm gonna get that out. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim this to this edge. So I'm gonna use a sanding block. Okay, and I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm gonna ride this edge of my paper and I'm pulling only in one direction, so I'm not using a sawing motion and it's gonna score my paper. So I get a nice clean edge. This is a pretty heavy grit sanding block. Um, I don't know, it's not marked, but- uh, Yeah, looking forward to seeing you too, Sully. Probably somewhere in an 80. Oh yes, we'll, we'll be there in September. Sully is in the UK. We'll be there for the Painters Business Academy, September 1st through 3rd, which I'm super excited about. I guess we have to warn the authorities now since we're bringing the whole family. We're taking over the UK. We're taking the whole family, Solly. You're going to get to meet my boys this time, not just Sean. Um, and I hope we can go exploring with you a little bit. I want to come see your neck of the woods. We're going to explore different things this time than what we saw last year when we were there. Okay, so I'm just working my way down my paper. And I'm going to be to the bottom, and this is going to give me a nice, clean edge. And I'll just pull away the rest of this excess. I do need to do that also to the bottom down here, but I want to go ahead and show you how I plan to um, attach the rest of this. So I've got that coat of varnish underneath. Now I'm going to apply one over the top. And this is going to really seat that paper, so it's going to match up with the moisture from underneath that kind of soaked through the paper. And this one I want to go nice and heavy on it. I want it to fully saturate that paper and meet up with the coat that I've got underneath. 
So don't be shy about this. And once I get this on, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna cut those hinges out. Now, when I add this moisture to that little bit of a, of a seam, a crease that I had in the paper, it's going to come right out. I do have a little bit of an air bubble that I can see right here. So I'm gonna press that out. And because I pulled this, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have enough clear coat underneath to put it back down. And I wanna make sure I don't have any air bubbles. All right. Oh yeah, I do want to show the the package for that. Sean's going to show you guys the package for oh, the paper. Well, I guess I have to now. So <laughs> since you were looking for it, okay. And yeah, my hands are all beat up around nice nice around these hinges that I hold have on, in please. here. Please hold. Um, I'm going to use this is the redesign with Prima razor knife, and I'm going to cut right around these hinges. And I can either remove this piece of paper that I'm going to cut away or I could choose to leave it on the back side of my hinge. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it. I don't need to leave paper on the back side of my hinge. Wait a minute, it's super late in the UK, isn't it? Why is Sally even watching right now? Insomnia tonight, isn't it late there? Was it eight hours? Eight or nine, I think, depending on where you were. No, it was eight in the UK. Yeah, you're right. All right, and now I've cut this away, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this little square out that I just cut. Yeah, which makes it nothing. I'd rather do it two o'clock in the morning. That's what I like to do when I'm hanging out. I'm like, what? You know what? All right, so can you see that? That looks really nice. I think I'm going to just go ahead and leave the paper off. I don't need to. I'll leave a paper on that hinge and then I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I seat all around that hinge but that gave me a nice clean edge and my hinge is already painted so they kind of disappear into the background I'm going to cut this hinge away too well I think I yeah my edge of my knife is damaged like I kind of bent the edge so it's not cutting new blade yeah okay Let's try this. That's what I got. Not as fancy, but it'll get the job done. It's fancy. Sorry if my head's in the way, guys. I'm trying to show you guys while still cutting this. No comment. Yeah, that's better. I, I, that's one of those blades, uh, my redesign with Prima Knife, that I can pop the blade off of, and I need to pop a new one because it's kind of bent on the end. All right, so that looks really nice. Now, uh, I don't have a lump there where my hinges were. It's nice and flat, and I'm gonna go ahead, and I will let this dry, and I will actually come back and put another layer of the clear coat over top, too. All right, so that's one of my final steps on this piece, is I'm gonna add this to the back of the doors. I'll let this dry. And then I will come back and put another coat of clear on this. I do need to trim this bottom right here, which I could probably do with this knife. Really like your hair color. Thanks. All right, so that I just went ahead and trimmed with the knife. That's another alternative to using the sanding block. Either way, I got a nice clean edge on it. And it's just a little fun surprise when you open the door and this coordinates really well with the look outside holy so crap it's all... pam jacobs is in alaska hey pam i know she was just in florida while we were there too <laughs> like she's all over the place we're, we're, it's hard to keep track of you pam like where in the world is pam jacobs That's what oh thanks say. karen youtube isn't that great i can't see very well well we're I... uh it, ha it puts a, di a weird mm. angle on the camera Okay, so let's come back to the outside and my next finishing touch on this is going to be adding clear coat. I'm going to use the same clear coat that I just used and got all over my elbow. Um, I stuck my elbow on the paper and I'm going to use the same clear coat that I use on the front that I used inside to attach the paper. So let's talk about different mm. methods of applying clear coat. I've got all these different types of sponges. They're all great. They're all fine. This one's from Country Chic. Uh, this one is... I forget where this big guy was from. This is from Fusion Mineral Paint. 
This one here is just off of Amazon. This is a Home Depot hardware store, like um, in the automotive section that you can use. And I like all of them pretty equally. Um, when I'm using a sponge to apply my clear coat, you grab my Mr. Bottle. Can you grab me a Mr. Bottle? Oh, right, right now. I got you. I do like to dampen my sponge just because it's a sponge. So it's going to absorb whatever you put into it. And so putting water on there keeps it from absorbing uh, all the clear coat. So we'll talk a little bit, I'll show you, um, I'm gonna put it on with a sponge and then we'll also put some on with a brush. When I'm doing a surface like this that has details on it, like these moldings, I'm gonna need to use a brush on at least part of it. And I do have this brush that I was just using for my decoupage, so I'll use that as well. So um, you can pour your clear coat into another container or if you're, if you're using a sponge that fits in the mouth, obviously this one would be too big for the mouth of the container, you would need to pour it in a different container. This one's also too big. Oh, um, there's Cindy's eye in the sky. She sees the jewelry box behind you. Oh, my jewelry box is over here? Yeah, I have a couple of them that are done. One's a custom order, one I finished on camera with you guys. So I will dip my sponge in my clear coat and I just coat the, the face of the sponge. And then I'm just gonna wipe it on. Okay, super easy. This is a really easy method to apply clear coat. Okay, and I'm going to use nice, long, even linear strokes. I try to avoid stopping in the middle because you'll start getting um, lines in your clear coat. I can come around and do the edges of my door. Okay, but obviously I'm going to have a hard time getting into uh, crevices like around the edges of these moldings. So that's where I'm going to need to use a brush on this as well. So I can take a brush and I'll just dip that into my matte varnish. And I'm going to work that into some of these crevices of my mold. Get it into all those details. And I'm just kind of using a stippling motion. I'm not applying so much clear coat that it's going to start to drip because on all these details is where it's going to start to want to sneak drips in there. I always do come back uh, later and I'll look at my surface and just make sure I don't have any drips forming before I walk away from my project to let it dry. Best to get them while they're wet. Once your um, drips dry in your clear coat, it's always harder to correct them. But to correct them, I do use a, I'll use a razor blade and scrape off a drip. And then I'll come back and sand it a little bit. So this has some molding to it too. So here I'm kind of working my sponge into that, that little bit of molding. I'm gonna come up the other side, again, making sure I don't have any drips. And you can see the color of the paint starts to change. The color of the paint gets deeper when you apply clear coat to it. Top coat you're using is? I'm using Wiesel Matte Varnish. Never met him. Tough as nails and crystal clear. Okay, so let's come up here and do some of these drawers. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit just using a screwdriver. And I can do it the opposite way too, which is probably usually how I do it where I'll come and get the details first and then I'll just clean up around it with my sponge. I think sponging clear coat on is easier. Um, I actually spray most of my clear coats. <laughs> By I spray my clear coats, I mean Sean sprays most of my clear coats. Just thinking. <laughs> oh, you think that's, you like that. It's yeah. easier, huh? in, the, in the name of full honesty, Sean does spray most of my clear coats. Okay, and so then I did inside that molding and now I can come around the edges. But when I have, you know, when I'm not spraying, I usually will choose to sponge it on. Um, you wanna make sure your paint is fully dry when you're using a sponge. A sponge does create a lot of surface friction. So if your paint is still fresh, yeah, it, sorry, can Pam, want to, it can want to pull some of your uh, paint back. It's the dad humor, sorry. When you said matte varnish and I said never met never, him. Never heard of him? Yeah. All right, so here, spaces like this, like I have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a drip forming there. So I'm gonna come and make sure I get that out, okay? So any spaces like that, uh, small areas like this, I can come up here and get this with my brush. So any, I usually never use just the sponge on its own. It's usually the sponge and a brush at the same time, because there's always going to be areas that you cannot get to with just the sponge. Let's come in here and do the inside of this shelf. Huh? <laughs> you can get the camera in here, right? That's not going to be a problem. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> 
So same thing, this is pretty easy, but I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush and I'm gonna cut into these corners with my brush. It's super easy if you don't super have the camera. Easy. Super easy, look how easy this is for me. I mean, is anybody else in the room stressed? Okay, so I'll just come cut in with my brush, kind of like when you're painting around a, an interior room, you usually do your cutting in with a brush and then you'll come back with your roller. You can use a roller for applying your clear coat too, that's always an option. All right, so I cut in around all those edges and now I'm gonna dip my sponge in my clear coat. And I'm gonna start on the top. And I'm kind of pulling, making sure I have nice, you don't wanna overfill your sponge. It doesn't take a lot. You'll see right away that it changes the color of the paint and you can tell that you've coated your paint. I'm gonna do multiple coats of this. So this is just my first coat of my clear coat. I usually do uh, two coats on a body and usually around four coats on a top. And that's because the top gets the most use of a furniture piece. This piece does actually have a, a stone top. So I will not be clear coating the top of this. So I'm gonna do the back and this has the transfer on it. So I'm just gonna go right over the top of the transfer that I put on the back. And then let's do this other side. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, re-dip my sponge again. And I, I do lay the sponge off on the edge of the container. So I never have enough on there to actually form drips. So very, I do very thin layers. You're not gonna get all your clear coat done in one coat. So I know that this is gonna take multiple coats. Okay, and so that just gave me full coverage of my clear coat. I did all the inside of that shelf. So it actually goes pretty quickly. You know, when you come back to seal everything. So the moldings on the drawers, these are, are they the same as, it's Susan asking the question, but I think it's probably because of the camera. She's wondering if they're the same as the doors. Um, oh, yes, this is it's the a same cut down mold. Version of, yeah. I just cut off the ends because it was too long to fit on the drawer. So I just sliced off the ends and made it a little bit shorter, but it is the same medallion on both. Yeah, good eye. So you can cut. Are you Australian? <laughs> Good eye, Mike. <laughs> uh, I do need to practice. Get a million of them. I do need to practice that because I don't know if you guys saw while I was gone. I'm gonna go ahead and get my McDonald <laughs> hat. <laughs> while I was gone, uh, I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be coming to to Australia. I haven't even announced it yet, and I don't even get the chance to like enjoy it because it sold out the same day. <laughs> like it was amazing response. So I'm super excited um, to meet everybody. But we are going to Australia in November. So um, yeah, amazing response. I'll be doing that with Mint by Michelle and I'll be that or be there with uh, Vaughn from Vaughn Boo and Joita. And um, I, I know I'm forgetting a whole bunch, but uh, but if that's gonna be with Mint by Michelle. So if you guys got tickets to that, I'm super excited to meet everybody. They even um, expanded it and offered additional tickets and those sold out in like hours. It was just there was a wait list, and so it was, Cindy, a, that's it was not amazing. a knife. She says, I need a machete. A machete. Okay, so there, we've got that, that drawer done. So let me show you guys the, the one other step I'm going to do on this. That's going to kind of wrap this piece up, and that's going to be the inside. So I always pay attention to the insides of my pieces as well. I'm going to pull this out, and this, these drawers do have those little plastic tabs in the back. Ow, I just Ooh. pinched my finger on there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this drawer out and I always do the inside and I do the inside last because it will continue to get dust and everything in it as I'm working on the piece. So what part of uh, the big island is it gonna be on? We are going, we're uh, flying into Melbourne and it's in a town called, where is it by Michelle? Um, oh man, you're making me familiar. forget the name. Starts with a G. Um, uh, Gustafson? Yeah. No, that's not even close. I know. Yeah. Um, well, we're flying into Melbourne. That's where we're, we'll be flying into. Um, and we'll be going to where Mint by Michelle's shop is. Um, and yeah, so we'll be, we'll be able to explore around that area. If you guys have any uh, exploration tips, I'm totally receiving those. 
Go ahead and share. We're going to be that super annoying tourist. Yeah, we're going to be Australian tourists. Okay, so inside my pieces, I always apply, this is Wiseau Furniture Salve. It's a beautiful product. It comes in a ton of different scents. This is one of my favorites. This is Lemon Verbena. And I like this because it's very universal, universally appealing. It's a very fresh, clean scent. And I usually apply it with a brush. Um, this is the Wiseau Palm Brush. Um, and I just do a light dab in there. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. This can also be used on metal, on stone. We'll apply it to the stone top of this. So inside of my drawer, now this uh, does have a finish on it, but it's still gonna add a little bit of a sheen. Looster? Gonna condition it. Is that the name? No. no. It's, and um, yes, the boys are going. Jiling? Jiling? Bless you. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I'm gonna apply it to the sides. Now these have the glide built into the side of the drawer, so I'm gonna apply it to that. It's gonna help those glide along. So I think when a customer comes and picks up a piece that it should appeal to all their senses. And so this brings in, you know, you've got sight, they're gonna to wanna to feel it, they're gonna smell it. If it smells musty or aged. Um, so this just kind of shows that everything has been paid attention to from the inside out. I think, I think that's, I think I said it right. I wish we could see the entire area. Well, I've got this drawer out. I'm also going to put my clear coat, where my sponge go, uh, inside. Because I do paint to the inside of my piece. You can see right here, it just goes around the frame. Okay, and I want to make sure that that gets sealed as well. Focusing on you. It's all about you. Yeah, well, this is the All About Brandy show, so. Okay, so once I've got all that sealed, and I will do this to all of the drawers. Okay, and then I'll put this right back onto its slides and I can slide this drawer right back in. It smells beautiful. And I'll also do the same thing to the inside of the doors. So these here, make sure they're dusted out. There's some dust inside this piece. And then with my brush, uh -huh. So these are my finishing touches. These are some of the last steps that I do is the inside of the cabinet, adding my clear coat. Obviously that will be kind of to steal my paint off. And this is kind of what finishes the piece. And I do believe attention to detail says a lot to customers about your work. So I totally think these steps are super important. I have a little bit of paint right here that I want to get off. Yeah. Was sprayed by Sean requested to appear. No, we just forcefully apply that scenario. Well, here's the deal. It's I'm in California. It's like a 17 hour flight from California. So I was like, if I'm going to Australia, I'm bringing my family. Like we'll probably never go back there, right? It's super far away. So we're going to do this one time. We're going to do it right. And my boys are going. Sean and my boys. And maybe too. a stop off here or there. Yeah. So I think and then I'll show you guys, this is my hardware. They're just kind of simple knobs, but they pull in this charcoal gray. They've got a little bit of the specks of the gold in there. So I'm not going to change them. I'm going to leave them. Just these simple knobs will go onto my hardware back and that'll be, that'll be it. I can also use my furniture sub up here on my stone to polish this stone. Of course you want to do that. This is, a, well, I'm not going to get up here and make you go fully vertical on it, but I apply it to the stone. And I do this to the stone in my house too. We have granite countertops and I'll polish the stone like this. And it smells nice. And it smells really good and it seals up that stone. Gives it a nice shine. Just put it on the floor for when I do that risky business. Okay. So those will be my finishing touches. I'll go ahead and add my paper to the other side. I will seal the entire piece and then get that, uh, get that furniture salve on the inside. Um, I like the matte varnish. I chose it because this has kind of that suede feel to it, and I don't want to add any sheen. So um, the Wiseau matte is a, it's really nice matte. It has a, Night, Pam. it's not a super flat, 
Um, it has a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not enough that it like catches the light and glows at you. So it's a really pretty nice low sheen and I can feel the difference between the sealed paint and the raw paint. It takes away that chalky feeling. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up, you guys. I will get it put together in a video. I do have a video coming out on my YouTube channel. Like I said, I was uh, off last week for some travel. So I'm back, and I will be back with a new video on my channel tomorrow. So check out Brush by Brandy on YouTube. That'll be a tutorial that comes out tomorrow. And um, otherwise, I will let you guys go, and I will see you guys back here next week.